what five things we did learn from the 4-1 drubbing of Aston Villa. And number one is comeback kings. Yeah, and Spurs, after coming back from 1-0 behind yesterday, took their points tally from losing positions at home to 27 points since Ange took over, which is more than any other team in the league. So I think it's fair to say you could not count out Spurs uh, um, at home, especially when we go behind, because we just keep coming back, don't we? And it's um, happened more than that. I mean, you can look at it two ways. Do we keep going? Is it a problem that we keep going behind and we have to keep calling it back or does it show the resilience that we uh, have so many uh, wins when from losing positions but that is a stat to take note of I think it shows both hmm. because they, they brought up this stat on Match of the Day about home comebacks the second one was Man City with like I think ours was like 27 points or something and now there's like 17 and there's like, like 17 yeah. there's like a lot a big difference right and that just tells me a lot that we're just going behind way too many times at home. Um, I think every home game this season, bar the Everton, Everton game, we've gone from behind. We've come and won from behind, apart from the Arsenal game, which we didn't win, but we still went behind. So it tells me that we're going behind way too much, but it's also telling me that we're very resilient when we do go behind. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we've had it at times before, and Conte, however, we were 1 0 down, we're like, oh, that's it, that's it, done, we're not going It's just showing there is fight in this team. They never stop, I think someone says. Um, um, and it does, whether, like you said, you can look at it the way, yeah, Man City don't go behind that much because they're so good. What does matter is that we are coming back. Mm. It does show it. Man City, obviously, uh, they're a different entity. But it's good to see when we go down, it's like never doubt this team at home if we go 1-0 down because we, we, we will fight. And again, I think a lot of this is going down as well, especially this season. You look at Kulisevsky and Solanke's running as the two and what they put in and now saw it's it's just we have some real runners in there that will not stop. Yeah. And well but one thing also we're very good at is when we do when we do retake the lead we then go for the third and the fourth and we go really kill the game off and teams can't live with it. Because I think like when teams are spending a lot of the time just sitting in and trying to defend that lead and then they have to change up because we've we've got back in the lead then all of a sudden they can't handle us because we find it we're just taking advantage. And that's what you get when you play kind of the Andrew in a sense that a lot of teams, as I said before, when they take the lead, they will try and protect yeah. it a bit more. Whereas we just keep going for the throw. And, you know, sometimes it will cost you like last season, we gave up a few leads. But, but you know, at the moment, what we've seen is when we retake that lead, we're just killing them and they can't handle it. Absolutely. Uh, let's move on to number two, and that is Relentless Saar. And we had to have another five takeaways about Saar. We said about <laughs> Wednesday, about his, his form just continuing. And, you know, he's getting those goal contributions. He had a brilliant game on Wednesday. And I think another fantastic showing this time around. Uh, nine recoveries in the middle of the park, which is more than any other player in a Premier League game this season. One key pass in the game but obviously it doesn't tell the story because the two goals he was involved in you don't don't get a key pass for those for those assists but um brilliant um movements for for in in that two interceptions three clearances and i thought his um role for the goals was so crucial and uh that, that i thought you know the the first one brilliant pass into brendan johnson between the lines to, to set up that movement the um third goal brilliant interception from a pal torres pass which led to him playing richarlison in behind to get the third goal and he was just relentless throughout the game like they he just never stopped running never stopped looking for opportunities to win the ball back and um you know onana started the game stronger but i thought pape he can onana can live with pape by the end of it no absolutely and pape mata star man this boy is an absolute star star in the making and we were talking about you know every week we're talking at the moment saying how he's really growing into the season his performances are getting better and better well yesterday topped the lot didn't it yeah i mean i've got a friend that calls him the lawnmower because he covers every blade of grass um <laughs> and he lived up to it he we saw the impact he could have in last season obviously at the start of uh angie's poster cognitive management and no one could live with us but now people can live with us and now he's showing the impact that he really I think easing him back in this season and mainly blooding him in Europa and now getting him up to full match fitness, we can see the difference and the impact he's having him. He is just going from strength to strength. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, couldn't be happier with Big Pape. Uh, I love it when you call me Big Papa. <laughs> I forgot that song. Uh, number three, Solanke, the difference maker. Yeah, and 
he had a different type of performance I felt yesterday to some of his other performances. Yeah, where, like a number nine. <laughs> yeah, like a proper number nine, like a proper striker. And look, he did make the difference in, in when it when it, when push comes to shove because he was the one. His movement, he was always on the move. He was always looking to get in behind. And I think a lot of the times this season he has dropped a bit deeper. And I think he's done it to good effect. But I think in this game. Definitely a lot further forward. His average position, you can see, was a lot further forward than it has been in other games. And I think his pressing and his movement um, it was the big difference here. And obviously, when he got on those positions on this occasion, didn't um, fluff his lines, didn't think twice, finished it with a plomb. Excellent finishing, excellent display of finishing from, from Dom Solanke. Um, he had five shots in this game, three on target, um, seven touches in the box, and he had two goals um, of, after not having a shot on target in the last six games. And I think that was a consequence of, of him playing a lot further forward. And you can see his movement, for especially the first goal, it's just world-class forward play from him and really showed what he can offer in that position um, like playing on the last shoulder that movement was absolutely phenomenal and um yeah he got his reward yesterday and uh, that is what his performances have deserved overall yeah and that's what i've wanted to see more from him um in a spurs shirt so far because we've seen him excel at every different aspect of um of being a striker in this Ange Postecoglou system. He's been dropping deep. He's been pressing really well. He's been uh, doing really great build-up work and build-up play. And he's been so aggressive and his on-the-ball uh, technical levels have been astounding. Um, but what we haven't seen from him is really stick up front and be a proper goal threat um, on a consistent basis. And he did that yesterday. And it was the most complete performance I've seen from Dom Solanke in a Spurs shirt so far. And I couldn't be happier. Um, and I was so happy. I, I was questioning, like, why is he not getting the goal scoring position? Six game, no shot on target. Well, he backed those critics down yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. And the thing I loved about his performance yesterday as well is we, we look at, like you said, he's not been getting the opportunities. And a lot of it is because he's coming out to try and help the team to get the opportunities. That second goal with Davies winning the uh, the tackle and then Johnson, Saar and Kulisewski, I don't think we've created a chance from him f through the middle. Where mm, he's actually been in the middle to point. actually get there. So... Mm. Our build-up play, he's been part of the build-up play. Yeah. And then when it gets there, so like you were saying when you were showing his positions, him being so far forward, we created those opportunities. And it was whether a case he could finish it, because I didn't think he was going to dink it when he got through. I thought he was going to try and take him on or smash it past him. That was an incredible dink. And I think having him more central, even for the second goal, he, he yeah. wasn't dragging out wide. He, saw, he tracked the movement. Um, I think getting him central is a major key to this and finding a way to bring him into the game rather than making him go out to get the game. Um, and he got his result, his rewards yesterday because, like you said, a quite magnificent performance. Yeah. Number four, Tottenham are the top goal scorers in the Premier League. Yeah, with the four goals we scored yesterday, that takes our tally to 22 goals this season in the Premier League, which is now more than anyone else in the Premier League. And, you know, a lot of talk in, this, in the summer, have we improved the front line enough? You know, only Solanke really improves the front line and stuff like that. You know, is Brennan good enough? That kind of stuff. Well, at the moment, we are sitting as the league's top goal scorers after 10 games and um, you know does that does that uh, bat away any of the suggestions that this, this this front line still isn't good enough absolutely uh, you can't not be top goal scorers in the Premier League if you don't have a good forward line and um, if you if you're looking at narratives around YouTube and around social media Brennan Johnson's not good enough Dom Solanke is um, is well overpriced for the money that we paid for him. Hyung Min Son, um, Son Hyung Min is completely washed. You know what I mean? These three players, um, Dejan Kulisevsky as well. Uh, you've seen poor narratives around him. Brennan Johnson now, what's he scored? Three goals this season? Two, three goals this season? I think seven. Is it seven, seven in all competitions? I'm talking about Premier League. Premier League is four now, isn't it? Four goals in the Premier League. Solanke scored four goals in the Premier League. Sonny scored two goals in the Premier League. I mean, to I be know, the... Sonny's got more than two, didn't he? How many? Is he? I thought he's got two goals, two assists. No, because he got two three goals, Everton, two assists. And did he get two against West? Oh, one against West Ham. So three goals, yeah, two assists. Nice. Yeah, three goals, two assists. Yeah. So, like, to be top goal scorers in the Premier League when you're in a league of uh, teams like Manchester City and Liverpool at this stage of the season is is incredible, and. 
Ange um, said that he really wanted to bolster this forward line uh, in this summer. I still think we do have a bit more work to do in terms of bringing more quality to that front line. Don't get me wrong. But for the players that we have in this moment in time, what they're doing is incredible. Yeah, they, they deserve all the plaudits. And obviously, I'm a huge fan of Brennan Johnson, who I thought was magnificent yesterday's work <coughs> off the ball. Um, and like you said, like you put it that way, this front line that a lot of people will have criticism about... Um, they're firing. The good thing is they're actually sharing the goals around, isn't it? Like yeah. You look at Man City, you go right, Haaland, he's got a lion's share, and you go through the teams. The the, the, the forward line are sharing the goals about them. Yes. Under the radar, more... Madison has three goals and three assists. Yeah. Now. yeah. Six Nothing. goal contributions. Is that, yeah. more, is that more than anyone else for us? Um... Well, Sonny has also got... He's got three goals, three assists, actually, Sonny. Solanke's got five goal contributions, four goals, one assist. Brennan has four goals... He's actually got four goals, zero assists. So, yeah, um, Madison... So, Madison actually is leading the goal contribution chart. He's mad. There you go. They're, 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 they're all, the, the, the goals are being shared around, aren't they? They just... Uh, like I said, yes, it's only 10 games and you can't really go, oh, it's nothing to write home about, but, but to be top goal scorer in the Premier League with a front line that's apparently not good enough... Um, speaks wonders, doesn't it? I've got a great stat, actually, because there, there was a bit of a narrative that Brennan Johnson only does it against the poorer sides in the Premier League, right? Mm -hmm. He's got four goals this season. First goal was against Brentford, mm -hmm. who, were, who were sitting, what, 10th, 11th in the table, whatever. Um, Manchester United, yes, I know they're sitting 14th, but they're classified as a top half mm -hmm. team in the Premier League. Uh, Brighton, mm -hmm. he scored, who are flying high in the Premier League this season. Aston Villa. Yep. So, actually, none of his goals this season have come against the classic poor sides in the Premier League this season. Exactly. So, fair Big play, Brennan. Brennan. And, yeah, look, our, our, our attack is uh, proving a lot of people wrong at the moment. Obviously, still, still only 10 games in, but still, top goal scorers. And it's showing that, that you know, you could argue other, players, other teams have better players in attack and stuff, but... The way Ange has them playing in their certain roles is really working to a T at the moment, in the, yeah. especially at home anyway. And last but not least, the fifth and final takeaway is the gap closing. Yeah, and Spurs with that win now sit two points behind fourth place Chelsea, three points behind third place Nottingham Forest. And uh, that win has really put us back in and amongst it when it comes to that kind of race. You know, it wasn't uh, when we lost to Arsenal, how many points were we behind? So Seven, I think. So we've gained six points on them, have we? Uh, four, five points on them over the past uh, three games. And yeah, because we beat West Ham, they lost to Bournemouth. We beat... <coughs> we beat um, they drew to uh, Liverpool and we lost to Palace and then we won. Then we beat um, Villa and they lost to uh, Newcastle. Yeah. So... Um, and when they drew with Man City, I'm sure we got points that weekend. Can't see that far back at the moment. Um, potentially. But... I think, yeah, so that gap's over Arsenal now in fifth with two points behind them. So it's a very, very the, the league is actually so tight now. There's only four points between 10th and, th and third, which is mad. Um, so at the moment, the, the, the league is very, very tight. But uh, look, the gap is really, really closed. And if we do beat Ipswich now, we're, you know, with Brighton playing City, Arsenal playing Chelsea and, and Liverpool playing Villa, regardless of who gets what in those games, we will be probably in the top four, I would say. And, we? and you know what? Regarding Arsenal, yeah, regarding Arsenal, first of all, they're firmly in the mud right now. I'm hearing Arteta out all over the shop. Last season, after we played them, I said they play like prime Bolton. I had Arsenal fans coming at me. I had Arsenal fans being like, what are you talking about? We play unbelievable football. Well, you you were laughing then. You goddamn ain't laughing now, are you? Prime Bolton, Tony Pulis, Stoke City. That's the way Arsenal play at the moment. This Arsenal team are an absolute disgrace. And that's all I've got to say on that. Yeah, I, I, I hate it. I, I have to say, when I see the word gap closing, I hate it because all those years with mind that the gap. mind, the I can't stand that word. Um, all I will say is let's just hope that this, this international break we end up going in a better position than we have the last two. Yeah, true. Because whenever it's come to it, and obviously it's always come after a Europa League game, and I think it's been an away Europa League game, hasn't it, where the next international breaks come and we, we just haven't done it in the league. Ipswich are going to be no mugs. Um, let's just hope we can end this one on a, 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 on a winning international yeah. break. Because like we said, when we come back, it's just relentless, isn't it? It's just we, relentless. We also, we're gaining some serious points on last season in terms of game to game. Because United, we drew. 
Yeah. Villa and the West Ham, we lost both those games. Yeah. We won both those games now. Yeah. I know Palace, we won last season, lost this season. That's probably one of the only games. Um, trying to think. Brentford so Leicester, the Leicester would have been one of them. Leicester would we have been. All the re- so we've probably dropped four points on we last season, Leicester but we've gained... Season. That's what I'm saying. We've oh, just okay. got to save from one of the promoted gotcha. teams from last season. So if we've gotcha. dropped four points on those games. We've gained seven in the others. So we've got on a good way mm. in game to game yeah. from last season. It's looking good. It's looking good. And uh, long may the Arsenal fall continue and long may the Tottenham rise continue as well. And you never know, by next week, we could be above them. Could be. That would be lovely. Very much could be. Um, but yeah, that is the five takeaways. That's the five things we did learn from the 4-1 win over Aston Villa.